Slash has one of the most unique styles of movement in Quake Champions, and one that takes a lot of extra work to get used to and to get comfortable with. Let's take a look at how best to use it, how to utilize it, and how to be as fast as possible with this champion. Let's get started. Slash's unique movement style is called Crouch Sliding, and it hails from Quake 4. We'll go ahead and we're gonna break this down from the absolute basics, and we're gonna help you train as if you're learning this for the very first time, because if you're watching this video, you probably are. So let's begin. The main thing that you're gonna wanna do is first, I want you to turn up the sound on this video. I want you to put in your headphones, and I want you to listen closely because audio cues are gonna be very important for your initial understanding of how to use this crouch sliding technique. And if you can't do that to follow along, that's okay, but it is just a major help. So let's get started. What I want you to do is to just jump in place. Just jump in place. You don't need to hold the button, just jump a single time. What I want you to do is get used to how long it takes you to float through the air before your feet touch the ground again. I want you to get used to that timing of jump, uh, jump, uh, jump, uh. I want you to learn that timing. Now, the next important thing is in order to enable a crouch slide, we need to, well, crouch. What you're going to want to do is press and hold the crouch button right when your feet are about to touch the ground. So not after you touch the ground, but when you're just about to hit the ground, that's when you start pressing and holding the crouch button, like so. Quad spawned. You're not going to see much of a difference or hear much of a difference yet, but I want you to get used to this change from spacebar to left crouch. Spacebar to left crouch. Or whatever your jump and crouch are bound to. I'm, I'm assuming default controls here. Jump to crouch. Once you have that movement down, which would only take you a minute or two, what I want you to do is now hold W while you're doing this. So hold W, jump, crouch, and hold. Jump, crouch, and hold. Now you're going to start hearing that slashing sound, that grinding of my character sliding across the ground. Here's me just jumping normally. Here's me just jumping, right? Now here's me doing the jump with the crouch slide. Hear that? Hear that grinding sound? That is the activation of this Quake 4 style movement. That is the activation of your crouch slide. If you can't hear it, you can also see it modeled by your gun tilting sideways ever so slightly. See how my rocket launcher tilts? Watch those big pylons at the very front of the barrel of the rocket launcher. Watch how those turn. You see that turn? When you see them turned over to the right side like that, you know that you are correctly doing the crouch slide for as long as they are turned. And remember, you need to hold that crouch button down. Once you're used to doing this, obviously in order to do crouch slides to your maximum effectiveness, you're not gonna hold only W. That's not gonna get you the speed that you want. You want to hold a diagonal, either forward and left or forward and right. So with default controls, that's W and A or W and D. Just walk in that diagonal direction, right? This is going to be very familiar to you if you already know how to strafe jump, which is a much more basic and fundamental style of movement in Quake, which I strongly recommend that you learn first before trying to learn this mechanic. And I will leave a description, or I'm sorry, I will leave a link in the description box down below for that. But what you want to do is this same thing. So you know, like we're holding forward, jump, and then hold and crouch. But instead of holding just forward, this time we're going to start holding a diagonal. So... We'll do the diagonal. And we're going to move our mouse in the same direction that we're holding that diagonal. So if we're holding forward and left, we're going to move our mouse left. And you can see all of my inputs here. Again, these are my directions. When I jump, you see that jump icon there. So I'm going to be holding, to go around this big bend here, I'm going to be holding that forward and right diagonal. Just I'm never going to be letting go of it once I start doing my crouch slides. All you need to do is just jump towards when your crouch slide is about to expire, because by the way, your crouch slides don't last forever. They will expire after a short period of time. So you need to hold that crouch slide only for a brief moment before jumping again in order to continue maintaining that speed. But we're gonna hold forward and right. We're gonna, do, we're gonna jump in the air while holding forward and right. We're gonna crouch as soon as we hit the ground. And while we're holding crouch, we're gonna move our mouse right while continuing to hold forward and right. Just watch closely with my inputs. Unfortunately, you can't see when I'm holding crouch, but 
It's very, very simple. Again, we'll go in the left direction here. This is all very replicable with practice. It's going to take you time. It's going to take you a lot of time to get used to this movement. But once you spend a little bit of work on it, you will find that you can do it too. And it's not super duper hard. It's really as simple as just holding a diagonal direction alongside of the crouch button while moving your mouse in that right direction. So you're holding essentially three buttons on your keyboard. Forward, diagonal, crouch. And then you're moving your mouse in whichever direction you're holding the diagonal. That's really all that there is to it. You'll see here, I'm getting cute. Sometimes I'm doing really short hops. Sometimes I'm letting the slide last for a very long time. You can even see here that I've made a couple of direction changes. I went all the way around this bend. Whoops, if I don't miss entirely. Let's, let's hop back up there really quickly. With enough practice, you can jump from these stairs here. You can slide through here all, and just making a right turn the whole way through. You can make a direction change, then you'll start sliding left over here. You'll come about to here, and you'll start making a direction change and go to the right again, all in one big super duper slide. Now, of course, we're going to watch me probably fail at this live as I'm trying to demonstrate it, but you guys obviously get the point. You can come all the way through here. I did my slide a little bit late there, so it didn't quite get the duration that I wanted, but you get the point. Your slides can last a very long time. You can change directions. You can cover a lot of ground very quickly once you get really adept at that direction change of whenever you're trying to change the, the diagonal on your keyboard you just move your mouse along with it it's really that simple but you need to practice it you need to get used to it another mechanic of the crouch slide that is not readily or easily apparent but once you learn it is actually going to be very simple to uh, understand is that the duration of your slide depends entirely upon how much time you spend in the air before you start holding that crouch button on the ground. So for example, if I'm standing down here and I just do a jump, right? Just a, a standard neutral jump. And I press crouch right at the very at the very end of that jump and I start sliding, there is a limit to how long I can actually slide with this champion before I end up running out of to make it term up slide juice, basically. I could only go so far. There's only so much gas in the tank before you simply cannot slide anymore, and you have to either jump or your slide will suddenly and abruptly end and drop you back down to effectively zero speed. So we'll do it just off of a jump here. I couldn't even make it to the door. If I do a little better of a job, I really focus on getting that good slide. I can make it to the door. And I think if I do really well, I can probably make it to the railgun, almost. Maybe a good player can, but I can't. But, point still made. You can only go a short distance before you simply run out of your ability to slide. Now, if I take this lift here, and I jump up really high off of this, and then I land, and I start doing the crouch slide from that long, big jump, let's see what happens. Well, if I don't mess it up. Suddenly, I can slide all the way across the map. From lift to lift to lift. All because I spent more time in the air before activating my crouch slide. It's all entirely dependent on how long you spend in the air and that will determine the length of your slide of course assuming that your crouching is happening right when your feet are about to touch the ground if you're a little unsure of yourself if you're a little unconfident in your ability to make that timing just right you're gonna get scared you're gonna press the crouch button early and that's not gonna prevent you from doing the slide entirely but it's going to severely limit the amount of time that you can spend sliding and it's going to cause you a lot of issues in your slides ending early and you just being sad with your general state of movement. So it's going to take some work, but once you put that effort in, you will get that down. Another thing to note is that let's say, for example, 
I come sliding and I go over this edge here. And I want to continue sliding down there. You cannot just continue holding the crouch button. You need to let go of the crouch button once you become airborne. So, while you're sliding, once you're airborne again, I can't keep holding crouch. You see, I just don't move anymore. I'm just crouch walking on the ground. But, if you let go of crouch midair, and then you press it again right before you touch the ground down there, you can turn one slide into two slides. And it's very... Very good, very necessary if you want to just slide, slide, slide your little heart out. Again, you can even hear, again, if you're listening, because you need to be listening with your headphones, remember. You'll hear the slides end. Here, actually, I can show you over here a really great example of this. I want you to listen. And I want you to think, how many slides am I doing to get from here to there? that rocket launcher from here to the rocket launcher just listen tell me how many slides i want you to pay attention because you're going to realize how often you need to be re-sliding so there you heard me slide four times four different occasions i slid once on this plane right once i came flying over this edge you need to let go of crouch in midair press it again here there's another set of stairs here that you need to watch out for. And it's a very, very short time you spend airborne. Because if you go flying off of here, you're airborne for only just a short, you know, fraction of a second before you hit that next piece of ground. If I try to come through here holding crouch, I'm sad, right? I'm really sad. We don't want to let that happen. We don't want to be sad. want to let go and then repress crouch when we hit the bottom of that staircase. So we keep on going. But notice that when you're going from up here to down there... Because it's a really short time spent in midair, it's really not possible for you to slide from here all the way to that rocket launcher. You're gonna run out of gas really quickly. See, I can't quite make it all the way. I'm gonna stop just short of that rocket launcher. So what you saw me do is I'm actually turning this one, I'm turning this one crappy slide here into two. I just jumped and did it again because a jump is gonna give me that little bit more air time. I can reset how much fuel in the get fuel I have in the tank effectively a again that's not an actual thing but I I'm trying to make up some form of mannerism to help explain it to you guys it's really that simple is that you just need to understand how long was your previous jump leading up to the current slide that you're in and that is going to help you to determine whether or not you can hold your slide for a long time or if you need to let it go very rapidly and just continue re-sliding with small jumps over and over and over all of these methods are all good and useful, and you're going to be using them in regular play very often, but you just need to understand all of them before you're going to truly master Slash's movement. The most difficult thing to do with Slash's crouch sliding movement is the reverse crouch slide. This is going to be a bit of a brain bender. It's a little bit more difficult to explain, so it's something that you need to really practice yourself to get used to, and once you get everything down on your own in your own time it'll make a lot more sense but i'll try my best to explain it here so the big thing with backwards crouch sliding is that you're gonna always be pointing the direction of your arrow keys or rather your movement keys in the same direction that you're intending to go so like for forward crouch sliding you're always pointing those movement keys in the direction you're intending to go and your mouse is simply following along right so if I'm trying to go left around this corner, around these corners here, I'm just holding forward and left, and I'm moving the mouse left. Simple enough, right? Holding forward and left, moving left. Forward and left, moving left. And that's all well and good. But if you want to start doing this in reverse, or going, you know, one forward, one reverse, one forward, one reverse, you need to start doing things kind of backwards. So what you're effectively going to do is instead of holding a forward diagonal, like forward and left and forward and right, you're going to start holding back and left or back and right. And you're going to orient your aim in such a way that basically your back is always turned to where you're intending to go. So say, for example, I'm wanting to come around here in the forward direction and then come back around through here in reverse and then go forward, like forward in the sun, backwards in the dark, right? You need to change that diagonal on your keyboard. 
So you're always having the direction that you're intending to go. And again, I'm going to be failing at this probably a little bit, but... You can slow this down in the YouTube playback if you need to. To really see what's happening, because these are very quick motions. But effectively, I'm always pointing these movement keys in the direction that I want my body to go. And you'll notice that I'm always moving my mouse left still. I'm always turning my aim left in this example. I'm only turning right to recenter my aim, but whenever I'm crouch sliding, I'm moving left. Whenever I'm airborne, I'm moving right to recenter aim. It's only to recenter aim. It's not contributing to my movement. But you guys get the idea. Again, slow it down if you need to, but that is the main thing with reverse crouch sliding. And I think that this one particular area on Sarnath is a really great place to practice it. And you can start going in reverse, going the other way to practice as well. And we can do a whole lot of really cool stuff with this, but it's a really advanced technique. It's not something that you need to do right off, right out of the gate in order to do really well with Slash. Or even after like a month of playing her, you really don't need to be super great at doing that. But if you wanna be a top level Slash player, you wanna be a dueler with Slash or whatever, that is something that you do want to focus on in the long term to really become the best Slash player you could possibly be. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for me today. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope that you've learned something new. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below, and I will do my best to help you out. Otherwise, that'll do it for tonight. Take care, guys. Have a good one.